sorry, I, that's such a funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> that is a funny question. I don't know why. <laughs> You are listening to the multifaceted Megan Poppy. Megan, we worked on an episode of Evil Kin together, but were you an actress first or a makeup artist first? So I was a makeup artist first and just on a whim, I was like, hey, I've always wanted to do acting and I tried and then I got onto that show. So yeah. Oh, was that your first show? I think that episode we did was maybe the second one, but it, my first acting experience was uh, with one of those crime shows. Cool. So how did you get your start as a makeup artist? I did the retail route and I didn't really care too much for the this push on sales, you know, rather than like the, the creative outlet. So I tried and tried and it took me about six months before because I didn't have any uh connections or contacts within the industry so it took me like six months before someone was like okay we'll give you a shot so okay so how did you decide to transition into acting what about it you know attracted you to that idea just honoring that little five-year-old inside of me (laughs) who did you like when you were little and you thought oh that'd be fun to try so I, I watched cartoons when I was a kid. I still watch cartoons. Um, but I would see those, like, you know, ads, you know, like I'd see kids playing with toys. And I was like, Mom, I want to be able to do that. Like, how can you, like, how do I do that? I want to be that girl, you know, so. Oh, the kids in the commercials having fun. Yes. <laughs> I always wanted to do that. <laughs> I had wanted to be Mikey, that person just eating cereal. Was his commercial. I'm like, oh, I can do that. That's easy. That would be a good one, too. (laughs) You've done makeup for several musicians for their music videos. Do you prefer that work over being on a film set to do makeup? Or does it really make a difference in your day? I love, you know what? I love both. I love working with actors. um, uh, And I love doing, you know, like working directly with artists. You know, it's like a one-on-one and it's, I, I can't say I like one more than the other. Well, as long as they're, you know, nice. <laughs> yes. You've done makeup for people in Congress, a Nobel Peace Prize nominee, and for famous football players for all sorts of ads and commercials. Yeah. So were they were they all down to earth or some more than others? I feel like 99% of the people I work with have all been like really cool. So I, I've been fortunate in that way. I guess. I don't know. I ha- I ha- I've never reached out to my artist friends and, you know, asked like, hey, what's your percentage of mean people? <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm, I am going to ask that. <laughs> yeah, I just wondered if people in those positions of power that weren't really artists necessarily, just different industries, if they were nice or not, or if they were standoffish. No, they're actually really nice people. Like some people I was like, wow, I could invite this person to a barbecue, you know, I'm like, just like, just chill. It, um, I, I was a little like nervous, um, bef- you know, like when I first started doing that type of makeup. But no, everyone's been like really friendly, but, you know, professional. But, you know, yeah, just like really chill. Yeah, good. I wasn't sure if they were going to be snobby or, or treating you as the hired help. I know. I wondered that, too. But, you know, um, I go in. I, I don't watch a lot of like news and stuff. So a lot of the times I don't even have like what kind of expectations. I don't know their TV persona. You know, I don't know what they're like. So I kind of go in like blank slate. They're just people to you and you've got a job to do. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. Okay. Another question. How many times have you been a hand model? I mean, I found it unique to you because not everybody can have that on the resume, hand model. I've done uh, at least 10 times. It was just something I fell into. Like, hey, can we also take pictures of your hands too while you're wearing, you know, the accessories? I'm like, okay, you know. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense to throw that in there. Yeah, and that's how I built up that portfolio. It wasn't something I aimed for. So you've done voiceover work too. So in your voiceover classes, what kind of exercises did they have you do? Enunciations, you know, it's like mellow weather, yellow sweater, and unique New York. Yeah, just pronouncing things. And also like... 
I went through like doing voiceovers, I realized, wow, I've been pronouncing certain words wrong my entire life, you know, and no one ever corrected me. <laughs> yeah, that's trippy to realize. So what language was that voiceover project in? English. Okay. Have you ever done any project that's in a different language than English? Kind of. I've done like made up languages. Like I didn't make up the language, but it's a made up language within the voiceover world. So uh, I've gotten quite accustomed to being able to do that. I'm like, oh, okay, that's the word. All right, here we go. Here's the language. <laughs> okay. And you do different accents too? Yeah. Are you Italian or Irish or what's your background? I'm Mexican and I just found out I was Scottish uh, and Irish. Well, I know I was Irish, but I didn't know I was Scottish as well. But, you know, they're so close. So so then are those accents that you can do Irish, Scottish or Mexican? No, not Scottish. I, Irish, you know, <laughs> um, but I do a lot of like Southern uh, type of accents. I'm trying to think. That's like my primary one. And I've done British, which dialect of that, I don't know, but <laughs> whatever the director approved of. But some of my friends can turn it on and off. I'm like, wow, that's cool. But let's talk about the strike going on right now. Like it might actually take a while. So do you have advice on how we can all collectively weather the storm together? Just keep an optimistic view of it. I, I've talked to some people and they seem like really of course, down and like disheartened about it, but it seems like they don't know whether or not it's going to be a positive outcome. I fully believe that it will be. I feel like our industry is, you know, going through this and it will be kind of like a map for other industries on how they're going to incorporate AI. So yeah, it has to be discussed now. The time is now because <laughs> it's happening. I feel like it ha absolutely has to be done, and especially with contracts. I mean, like rewording it. Some of this stuff that I've seen, which is one of the reasons why I kind of like backed away from acting, was they want, how did they word it? It was like, we own the rights to everything that's like taken, of course, um, but forever and throughout the entire universe. It's like, what, what, where are oh we going to like... And that's been on multiple. And I was like, throughout the universe, like, what? where are you guys going to air Whoa. this? Do they want to put your image on Mars and not pay you for it? No, <laughs> like, <laughs> throughout the universe. That, that always, like, got me. I was like, um. Yeah, forever and always. And I think the people starting out don't, you know, don't pay attention to that language. They're just excited to be offered a part. And if you sign away your image forever, it's like you're shooting yourself in the foot for something down the line that might have paid you a good deal, but now you can't because there's a conflict. Yeah. Okay, well, on a different note, I'd like to talk to you about casting director and author Bonnie Gillespie. She uses planetary cycles, star alignments, goddess asteroids, and chart harmonies as tools to help bring more balance and joy into her life. So do you dabble in astrology too? I always loved, I was going to say I always loved a Zodiac, but I guess that doesn't that correlates a little bit within, or a lot, I don't know, into astrology. I definitely like it, you know, with the whole mainstream of Mercury retrograde. And, you know, I like make sure to like double check, you know, contracts or, you know, if I'm traveling during that time, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I do like signs. Like, um, I, I know a lot about Aquarius, my own, but Oh, you're an Aquarius. I love Aquarians. <laughs> Thank you. And I like Leo. I'm compatible. Like, I'll know who I'm compatible with and who I might clash with. But I find it interesting because it's similar. The, the things that they list for characteristics, it's, like, true among several people that I know of that same star sign. It's it's fun yeah. to look into that. Uh, well, I believe in following patterns, so. <laughs> yes. Because it kind of gives you a sense of control in such a chaotic world. It's it's a little fun to get into that, what you were saying about patterns. It's kind of like looking at the weather channel. You know, it's like, okay, what's the 10-day forecast? You know, I'm always looking at the, the forecast, by the way. Um, but it's like, that way you kind of know, like, know what to expect. Of course, you don't know if it's actually going to rain or snow on a certain day. But it's like, that way you just, you kind of get like a little feel. It may not pan out that way, but, you know, just like a little heads up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's cool. 
So it looks like you're a fan of The Simpsons. Did you ever play the video game? No. I want them to make it uh, on the Switch, though. I would love for them to do a game on Switch. Because i that's my personal favorite, is the Switch. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but I did... So they did a game, like, on your tablet. I think you could do it, on, obviously, on your phone. Um, but they, it was called Tapped Out. And I did play that game. And uh, was that based on a cartoon? Or was just a, a game, originally? <laughs> sort of. Yeah. It was like a... Uh, what's that one game? Animal Crossing? Like, you kind of, like, build up your own world and... Have you ever heard of The Sims? I haven't played it, but I do know it. Okay. Well, what were some other cool cartoons that you used to like? Because I like the... I actually like the X-Men cartoon, and that's what got me into the... When all the X-Men movies started coming out, that's why I went. Because it was part of my childhood Aww. with my cousins. <laughs> Are there any other besides The Simpsons that you liked? Well, you say liked, like it's past tense. I still watch a lot of cartoons. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just don't know where to find the reruns. I guess Nickelodeon would probably have them. They are on, you know, streaming apps. Okay. So what are some examples? Gravity Falls. That was an excellent one. They don't play that. I mean, they still play, but it's not like new episodes anymore. There is Star vs. Something of the Universe. That was a great one. Um... And uh, DuckTales, I love both of them, the the original and the new one. <laughs> oh, I didn't know there was a new one. Yeah, that one's that one's a lot of fun. It, it's different because it's more focused on the, the Huey, Dewey, Louie. Had you gotten into Looney Tunes? No, uh, not Looney Tunes. There was a, like an offshoot where there were Tiny Tunes. Tiny Tunes, yes. <laughs> well, Looney Tunes is great, too. I feel like that still holds. They were trying to say that Looney Tunes was too violent. I saw it more as like slapstick, you know, like Three Stooges. Old vaudeville used to do a bunch of that stuff. And, it, you know, everybody was fine with it. It was funny. Oh, that kind of like goes into like video games also, that whole. I mean, I don't have any kids, so I can't say as a parent what I would do. That, that would take a, an interesting psychology. Well, what are some of your comfort movies? I love old movies, uh, like Jean Harlow, which is 1920s, I believe, maybe up to like 1932 or three. Of course, Marilyn Monroe. I like TCM. I, yeah, I love old movies. Um, uh, uh, it's not a movie, but I love The Office also. Yes. You know, I, I know what's going to happen. So it's like, I, I love it when I don't have to like necessarily watch, you know, it's like, I already know what's going to happen. So um, that way I can like listen to it. And if I leave the room and come right back, you know, I know what happened. Yes. I love just having something in the background. Yeah. And of course, you know, those, the, uh, Hallmark movies. <laughs> I love those too. Yeah. Or, uh, Lifetime maybe even. Well, those get a little scary. A little scary. <laughs> I like, I, I, yeah, I am like so tame with what I, I watch. I, I like calm, gentle. <laughs> so you don't watch Saw and Saw 2? No! Oh my gosh, no. Oh. <laughs> too scary. I don't even like watching or listening to like true crime stuff. Oh, that's too scary for me. I'm like, mm-mm, get that, all that energy away. Nope. So funny. Yeah, I don't do horror movies at all either. Good. I mean, it's stressful. Why not stress? Well, also, it, like, goes into, like, my dreams. I have, I'm a very vivid dreamer, and it's, like, I don't need to have, like, any kind of yucky... Like a nightmare. <laughs> ...in my dreams, yeah. No nightmares, that's the word. Yeah, I wonder how people do it that are fans of it, that love it so much, and it doesn't scare them, it doesn't infiltrate their thoughts after the movie's gone. It's, like, out of their minds, out of sight, out of mind. No, I hold on to stuff so bad. I'm going to hold on to this uh, conversation what we're having. Oh, gosh. Okay, let's turn it into something positive. Oh, like, you said Jean Harlow. You said Marilyn. How about, you know, what are the leading men that you used to like? Clark Gable, Bojangles, Cary Grant. Yes, he's from North by Northwest, right? And I think he did Philadelphia Story with Katherine Hepburn. I just know if he's in a movie, I, I always enjoyed it, so. An Affair to Remember was when... He t 
told somebody he was going to meet up with them at the at the tower, the Empire State Building. There we go. Yes. So I watched it recently, and then I absolutely like cracked up at the ending. But it was, sounded very snarky. <laughs> their very last lines, but it was supposed to be endearing, I think. But I just like busted out laughing. I was like, oh my gosh. I guess it could be interpreted different ways, maybe. Yeah, well, when I first watched it, I was like, oh, that's so loving. But then when I watched it recently, I was like, wait, what? Uh oh. <laughs> now I gotta go back and look through it. I don't remember that particular line. That whole last scene, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Megan. Well, thank you so much for coming on my show. Thank you for having me. It was so great talking with you. Get cozy. Another episode of Cielo Vision is coming up soon. Tell your friends about it, and we'll see you next time.